Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Brown from the Attabara Public Library. Today I'm going to show you a quick 15 minute science experiment that you can do with things that you probably already have in your kitchen. This experiment is called Elephant Toothpaste. Now think about the toothpaste you use when you brush your teeth. You probably just use a small amount, maybe a pea size amount on your toothbrush. Imagine how much an elephant would have to use if they brush their teeth. I mean, think about those big, long tusks and that big mouth that they have. They have a lot of molars to grind up the grass and the leaves that they eat. They would need a lot of toothpaste if they brushed their teeth. Now, we all know that elephants don't really brush their toothpaste, and this is not really elephant toothpaste. Let me start by saying you can't eat this, you can't use this <clears throat> to brush your teeth. Don't put this in your mouth but this is called elephant toothpaste. Now, you might have these things already in your home. If not, if you'd like to reserve a bag of free materials, <coughs> excuse me, you can call me at 508-222-7820 to reserve a bag of free materials, or you can email me at attaborokids at salesinc.org. If you decide to get your materials from me in the bag, you will find an instruction sheet You'll find an empty plastic bottle. You'll have four ounces, that's half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, and you'll have a tablespoon of yeast. These are the things that will be in the bag. Maybe you already have them at home. You will need to supply some things from your home, even if you get the bag from me. You'll need to supply some warm water. You will need to supply some dish soap. Doesn't matter what brand, <clears throat> you need a tablespoon measuring spoon. You need something to mix a few tablespoons of liquid in and I would definitely, definitely recommend some things to protect your table or your surface. I put down a, a table cover. I'm going to use this to put my to put my bottle in. You could probably do this experiment outside. This is going to be a messy one. So if the weather is nice, do it outside. All right, <clears throat> so we have our materials. We of course have our safety gear. I have my lab coat on to protect my clothes. I have my safety glasses to protect my eyes. Always, always with the safety gear. So the first thing we are gonna do to make our elephant toothpaste is we're gonna take the hydrogen peroxide that I gave you Again, this is half a cup, which is equal to four ounces. And we're gonna pour it into our empty bottle. All right, just pour it in there. So there's our peroxide. And then we're going to take a squirt of dish soap. Now, the dish soap, it doesn't need to be measured. On my instruction sheet, I just say a big squirt. So there you go, there's a big squirt of dish soap. Doesn't really need to be measured. I would like to color my foam so that you can see it better on the video. So I'm gonna use a few drops of food coloring. This is not necessary, but if you wanted to use food coloring just to make your foam a different color, go ahead and do that. Like I said, I wanna do it so that it shows up better on the video. So this is just regular food coloring that I had in my, in my cabinet. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna swish that around so that I can get the food coloring everywhere. Now, in my measuring cup, I am going to take my tablespoon of yeast that you'll get in the bag. I'm going to put it in there. This, as I said, is warm water. You don't want it too hot because then it will kill the yeast but you want it warm so it will activate the yeast. And I am going to measure three tablespoons of that with my one tablespoon of yeast. I'm gonna stir it up. I'm just stirring up my yeast in my water because I want it to get it all mixed together. You don't have to use a measuring cup to stir this. This is just what I had. Stir, stir, stir. Activate that yeast. Stir that up for about 30 seconds. 
All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Here is where the science comes in. I'm going to quickly pour this in. And here it comes. The elephant toothpaste. Look at that. Look at that foamy substance. Doesn't that kind of look like your toothpaste? Do you think elephants could use this to brush their teeth? If they brushed their teeth, sure, why not? Elephants don't brush their teeth. And again, remember I said this is not real toothpaste. It just kind of foams like toothpaste. You can't eat this. Nothing in here will hurt you, but you don't want to be eating it. Peroxide, not so good for the human body. All right, so there is my elephant toothpaste. Let's put this aside and talk about why does this happen? Why does this foam like this? Why does my, what, what is this reaction? Well, this kind of reaction right here is an exothermic reaction, which means it produces heat. So we had the warm water, but if you feel your jar, if you feel your bottle, you can feel the warmth all the way up. This, pr this produces a heat reaction, so it's exothermic. Not hot enough to burn you, but definitely produces heat. So why does this exothermic reaction take place? Well, because when hydrogen peroxide breaks down, it turns into oxygen, which is O2, and water, which is H2O. That's how hydrogen peroxide breaks down. Normally, when we use hydrogen peroxide, this breakdown happens very slowly. And maybe when you put it on a cut, um, it, you see it bubble a little bit. But when we add the yeast to the hydrogen peroxide, it makes the reaction happen very, very quickly. And that's why we get the bubbling so quickly. And that's why you can see it come out so very fast. The yeast is called the catalyst in this experiment. It's the catalyst that we add to the hydrogen peroxide to make the reaction happen very, very quickly. Why does it bubble so much? Well, because we added the dish soap. Now, normally hydrogen peroxide bubbles a little, the yeast would make it happen faster, but the amount of bubbling is because we added the dish soap. That's why I say a big squirt. I think you should do this experiment again. Don't add any dish soap and see what happens, or maybe just add a tiny little bit of dish soap and see what happens. It's the big squirt that makes the big bubbling reaction. And of course, as, as I said, it was the food coloring that made the coloring. But try it with different amounts of dish soap and see what different kinds of reactions you get. That's, this is a fun experiment. It's a messy experiment. As I said, maybe do it outside. Uh, if you want to film yourself doing it and send it to me or maybe take a picture after you've done it, I would love to see you do this fun science experiment. Thank you again for watching. Again, if you would like to have uh, the free materials bag, you can call me at 508-222-7820 or email me at attaborokids at salesinc.org and I will give you the bottle, I will give you the yeast, I will give you the instruction sheet, and I will give you the hydrogen peroxide. But if you have these things at home, try it a bunch of different times and see what you get. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.